The Three Little Pigs Once upon a time, there were three little pigs. The youngest of the pigs was quite small and loved to play games with his brothers. The middle of the pigs loved playing baseball with his friends, and he always wore a baseball hat on his head. The oldest of the pigs looked very strong and often enjoyed drawing pictures in his free time. The time came for these three pigs to leave home and seek their fortunes. Their mother, who loves fashion and jewelry, told them, Whatever you do, do it the best that you can, because that's the way to get along in the world. The first little pig built his house out of straw, because it was the easiest thing to do. The second little pig built his house out of sticks. This was a little bit stronger than a straw house. The third little pig built his house out of bricks. This was the strongest of the three. One night, the big bad wolf, who enjoyed bullying little piggies, came along and saw the first little pig in his house of straw. He said, Let me in, let me in, little pig, or I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin, said the little pig. But of course, the wolf did blow the house in, destroying the house as the first little pig ran away. The wolf then came to the house of sticks. Let me in, let me in, little pig, or I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin, said the little pig. But the wolf blew that house in too, and the second little pig ran away, just like his younger brother. The wolf then came to the house of bricks. Let me in, let me in, cried the wolf, or I'll huff and I'll puff till I blow your house in. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin, said the pig. Well, the wolf huffed and puffed, but he could not blow down that brick house. But the wolf was a sly old wolf, and he climbed up to the roof to look for a way into the brick house. The little pig saw the wolf climb up on the roof and placed a large bucket of water in the fireplace. When the wolf finally found the hole in the chimney, he crawled down and splash right into that bucket of water. The wolf ran away, soaking wet, and that was the end of their troubles with the big bad wolf. Welcome to a little video series where I walk you through some of the steps involved in performing a play production. Before actors have a chance to perform, there is a lot of work that needs to be done. Over the course of these videos, I'm going to talk you through the steps of reading through a script, um, designing costumes for characters, and designing the set for a play. So let's get right into reading the script. This is a super important step because without reading through the script, you would have no idea what a character or the set on stage is supposed to look like. Today, we're just going to focus on finding all of the words that help describe our characters. I'm going to read through the story and you're going to try your best to follow along. We're going to be reading The Three Little Pigs today. When we come across any sentences that might be describing our characters, we're going to stop look over the sentences, and then highlight or underline any of those describing words. A pencil is perfect for underlining. All right, let's dive on in. The Three Little Pigs Once upon a time, there were three little pigs. The youngest of the pigs was quite small and loved to play games with his brothers. I'm going to pause right there. Let's go back through these sentences. Once upon a time, there were three little pigs. Right off the bat, I think we should underline the word little. This seems obvious, but it's important because it tells us that our pigs are not giants or mouse-sized or human-sized, but they are little. Let's read the next sentence. The youngest of the pigs was quite small and loved to play games with his brothers. I think we should first underline youngest because the person playing the character needs to look like the youngest brother. Next we're going to underline quite small. Quite in this sentence is similar to saying very small, so we know he is much shorter than his brothers. We're also going to underline love to play games because maybe we'll give him a game controller or chess piece with this costume. 
Okay, let's continue with the story. The middle of the pigs loved playing baseball with his friends, and he always wore a baseball hat on his head. The oldest of the pigs looked very strong and often enjoyed drawing pictures in his free time. All right, let's stop again. The middle of the pigs loved playing baseball with his friends. We're going to underline the word middle, and then we're also going to underline loved playing baseball. This is for the same reasons that we underlined youngest and loved playing games with his brothers for the previous pig. If we continue the sentence, we'll see that it says, and he always wore a baseball hat on his head. So let's underline baseball hat because we'll need to remember this when we're creating his costume. As we go on, the oldest of the pigs looked very strong. Let's pause there and we're going to underline oldest and we're also going to underline very strong because maybe when we're drawing our characters, we'll want to make sure that he has like really big muscles. If we continue, then we see, and often enjoyed drawing pictures in his free time. So let's underline enjoyed drawing pictures. And then when we are designing his costume, we might end up giving him something like a paintbrush to show that he really likes art. All right, let's keep reading. The time came for these three pigs to leave home and seek their fortunes. Their mother, who loves fashion and jewelry, told them, whatever you do, do it the best that you can because that's the way to get along in the world. Did you see any details in those sentences? I spotted some about the pig's mom. Let's go back to the sentence that starts with their mother who loves fashion and jewelry and we're going to underline mother and loves fashion and jewelry. We're underlying mother because it helps define her character. We're gonna need to dress her up to look like a mom and of course she loves fashion, so maybe we'll give her some really nice clothes and jewelry. Now let's keep reading. The first little pig built his house out of straw because it was the easiest thing to do. The second little pig built his house out of sticks. Any character descriptions in there? I see some that can help with the set, but nothing that describes our characters. So let's move on. This was a little bit stronger than a straw house. The third little pig built his house out of bricks. I'm gonna pause again, and when I look over, I see some more set descriptions, but nothing to underline right now for our characters. Let's keep reading. One night, the big bad wolf, who enjoyed bullying little piggies, came along and saw the first little pig in his house of straw. He said, let me in, let me in, little pig, or I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. Let's read that sentence again. One night, the big bad wolf. Let's stop right there and we're going to underline big bad because those are going to be great words to help with our wolf costume. One night, the big bad wolf who enjoyed bullying little piggies. I'm gonna pause again. Did you guys see another word? Bullying. Let's underline enjoyed bullying because this really helps describe just how bad the wolf is. Okay, I think that's it for this little section so let's keep reading. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin, said the little pig. But of course, the wolf did blow the house in, destroying the house as the first little pig ran away. The wolf then came to the house of sticks. Let me in, let me in, little pig, or I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin, said the little pig. But the wolf blew that house in too, and the second little pig ran away just like his younger brother. I haven't found anything we need to underline yet. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What about not by the hair of my chinny chin chin? Isn't hair a describing word? Well, uh, it is technically describing something, but I don't think that the pigs have beards. And I think that in this case, they're just kind of saying all of the little tiny hairs that are on their body. So we're not going to be underlining that because I don't think it will affect how our character looks in the end. Okay, let's get back to it. The wolf then came to the house of bricks. Let me in, let me in, cried the wolf, or I'll huff and I'll puff till I blow your house in. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin, said the pigs. Well, the wolf huffed and puffed, but he could not blow down that brick house. But the wolf was a sly old wolf, and he climbed up on the roof to look for a way into the brick house. The little pig saw the wolf climb up on the roof 
and placed a large bucket of water in the fireplace. I think I found something. Let's reread that sentence about the wolf. But the wolf was a sly old wolf and he climbed up on the roof to look for a way into the brick house. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? We need to underline sly and old. Now we have a really good idea what the wolf should look like. Okay, we're almost finished. When the wolf finally found the hole in the chimney, he crawled down and cursed splash right into that bucket of water. The wolf ran away, soaking wet, and that was the end of their troubles with the big bad wolf. After the wolf fell into the bucket, he's described as running away, soaking wet. This isn't describing how the wolf looks throughout the entire story, but it is describing his appearance in this scene. So we're going to underline soaking wet just to be safe. Now let's finish up the story. The next day, the oldest pig invited his mother over. She said, you see, it is just as I told you. The way to get along in the world is to do things as well as you can. Fortunately for those pigs, they learned that lesson and they lived happily ever after. All right, we made it, great job. Reading a script like this may not seem exciting at first, but I kind of think of it like being a little detective. You really have to pay attention to the words and look for clues, and then when you find them all, you're ready to move on to the next step for performing your play. That's everything I have for today. Next time though, we are going to draw our costumes for all of the characters, so be ready for that. Thanks for reading with me, and I will see you soon. Bye.